I'm excited to welcome on a top prospect in 2022, Jamel Brown. What's going on, my guy? Going good. Everything's going good. How are you? Pretty good, man. Well, let's get into this. You've dealt with an injury that caused you to miss the sophomore season. You're saying you're 100% now. I mean, take us through this process. What did it take to get to the point you're at now? Um, so, I broke my wrist my uh, third game into my sophomore season. Um, it was a it was a tough ride. You know, I went through some ups and downs. Um, had to get surgery. Um, and I was out for six months, so I just got cleared in July. Um, yeah, I just been using the um, squeezy ball and just going to rehab, trying to get my strength back. And so how did you have the injury? What really happened to cause you to have the broken wrist? Um, I uh, got a steal um, on a fast break, went for a layup. And I came down and fell on my right on my right wrist. So, at that moment, did you know it was broken, or how did you kind of learn that it was broken? Um, honestly, I actually didn't know that it was broken. Um, it took me out of the game, and like I tried to put tape around it, but like I like I couldn't shoot or dribble or anything. So that's when I knew like it was something up with it. So then I had to go to the doctor, and they said it was broken. And so I think for a lot of guys, the COVID adjustment has been a benefit in terms of guys recovering from injuries giving you guys a little bit more time to get ready, would you say you would have been able to play a little bit earlier if COVID wasn't happening and AU games were occurring? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like COVID did help me out a lot with, like, just recovering, taking my time. Like, um, I was going to, like – I feel like I was going to, like, rush back into playing and not be fully 100%. So, I feel like COVID definitely helped um, benefit my wrist and my recovery. So you're running with Team Final. You guys have a big showcase thing a couple weekends now. How excited are you able to get back out there and play with that? Um, I'm, I'm really excited. You know, I'm, I'm hungry. Um, I'm ready to play. I haven't played since December, so I'm just ready to get out there with my friends and just have fun. So Team Final is a great team. But why did you choose them? Uh, um, the UIBL. Playing on UIBL is definitely like um, top top tier talent. Um, mm-hmm. The coaching staff over there, team final, you know, they uh, develop us. We get in the gym and just um, being around top top guys and playing with the top guys in my class and just like iron sharpens iron. So I feel like team final was the best fit for me. Absolutely, man. Let's get into these offers. You're a part of 2022. Coaches could start calling you about a month or so ago. What's it been like? How how's it been kind of adjusting to having coaches now call you? Uh, it's definitely different. Um, coaches like text me like every day. I gotta get like adjusted to like texting back and like um reaching out to them and stuff like that. So I definitely feel like it's been um it's been going good so far. And you have a lot of offers. Your first one was from Penn. You obviously added a lot more offers from them. I, I know a lot of schools have interest in you. What's this process looking like? Who's showing the most interest right now? Um, I would say Purdue has definitely been, like, recruiting me the hardest. Um, I had a Zoom meeting with them last month. Um, Ohio State actually had a Zoom meeting with them yesterday. Uh, that went well, Coach Haltman and Coach Diepler. Um Marquette has been showing me interest. Michigan, um, Stanford, Villanova, schools like that have been showing me interest. And so because your injury, you didn't get to play your sophomore season as we talked about. How did coaches kind of react to that? I mean, I know obviously some coaches still stay in contact. Who kind of went with you throughout the process of you being injured? Uh, Purdue. Purdue and UPenn has been the schools that, like, been calling me since I got injured. Um, Purdue has really been calling me, like, every every month or so, checking up on me and stuff like that, so – now, if a school is with you from pretty much the beginning and they go through an injury with you, they go through kind of your lows of your career, how much more appealing and how much more do you kind of like them when it comes time for decision time? Will that impact it at all because they've been with you from the beginning? Uh, yeah, definitely. Like, definitely means a lot to me, you know, just knowing that they, they're um, still interested in me and still have faith in me um, because, you know, an injury is tough and just to know that they're still with me and, like, having, like, schools that still contact me it's definitely a blessing now for you Penn, first offer take us to that day what was it like getting that offer and 
So when you got your first Division One offer? Uh, it definitely was a, a blessing, you know. Um, I got it my last last summer. I got it um, playing a team camp with Haverford. Um, I was just in my room, and my coach just texted me and said, "You pen offered, you know." Um, my parents were happy for me because you know it's an Ivy League school, and like my parents preach education first, so that was definitely big, um, big offer from Penn. No doubt, man. Let's talk about Purdue. You mentioned them; they're with you from the beginning, pretty much a big time program. How much? How appealing are they? What do you like about Purdue? Um, I like I like that they um they have four shooters. Around, around the perimeter. You no, know, I'm a three point shooter. Um, mm-hmm. And I like that they have trust, trust in their players. And I like the way they move the ball. And like they're not just stagnant, they move, cut through, get people open, things like that, run off screens. So it's definitely good. Ohio State, you mentioned as well. They're also a big time program. And in 2021, they have a top 10 recruiting class guys like Malachi, Kalen, Michi as well. When you see a program land a lot of big-time players in the class before you, how much more appealing does that make a school? Yeah, that's definitely uh, eye-opening to know that they, they're they good at recruiting and um, to know that I will, if I go to a school like that, um, I'll be there with top-tier guys and we can push each other. They can push me. I can push them and just know that we can go to war together and that would be very good for my recruitment. You personally, I mean, I know all schools have their own pitch to you. What do you want to hear from the school? What's the stuff that you want to make sure a school has that would truly interest you and have them become a legitimate option down the road? Um, I would say definitely trust. Trust has to be there first. Um, I have to trust them. They have to trust me. Um, a brotherhood with my teammates, family-oriented um, program. You know, um, definitely a winning culture. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Just want to win, trust it, and um, have good teammates. One way to build that brotherhood culture is by teaming up with guys that maybe you played with before that are at a certain college or teaming up with guys and going to college with them in your class. Is there anyone in particular you have talked to that you could see yourself possibly team up with in college? Um, no, nah, I wouldn't – not yet. I haven't really, like um, – really like thought about that but like I know like my uh my friends like Corey Floyd um Justice Williams Sean Doran Khalil Farmer like we all talk and like we just we're like my uh they're like my friends my close friends so I feel like going to school with one of my friends would be definitely a goal that's big time man you also mentioned that always another big school they're close to home as well what would it be like to possibly go to school where you're almost like the hometown kid, and you can kind of stay close to home. Um, yeah, um, hometown hometown school is definitely still in mind. Um, I feel like my family would be at every game, um, close to home. Uh, stick and go see my parents. Yeah, just knowing that the city that the city is behind me, and knowing that I can put on for the city, and you know they'll be there for me. How appealing is it to you to possibly stay close to home? Um, I mean, it's not like – I feel like I'm not going to base my decision off um, geography. Like, mm-hmm. either it's super far. I'm not going to base my decision off if it's super close or anything. Whatever is the, is the best fit for me, my family, I feel like I'm going to uh, make the right decision when it's time. Out of all the schools that have shown you the most interest at this point, who would you say the school you kind of expect an offer for from coming in soon? Um, uh, definitely um, Marquette, um, Ohio State soon. Um, yeah, like I feel like um, a lot more schools would have been like contacting me and like calling me, but you know I broke my wrist and haven't played this year. So to like even still have like schools like. Purdue, Villanova, Stanford, like Northwestern schools like that to contact me. Like it's, it's still a blessing because I didn't, because I barely played this year. So talking about Marquette, they as well have landed a couple of big time recruits. Stevie Mitchell's a huge guy. I know he's close to home for you too, as well as Cam, another big time scorer. 
what do you like about them and just what how appealing is Marquette to you? Uh yeah, Marquette, you know, it's in the Big East. Mm-hmm. Um they had a uh, Marcus um, Howard. Yeah, he was he was really good. He's a um, big time scorer. Um Big East is one of the best um conferences in the country. You know, they're like tough. Every game is um is hard. So I feel like Marquette is definitely a great place. Now describe your play style for guys that haven't seen you and haven't been able to maybe see the new Jamal Brown because of you being out for a while. What is your game like? Kind of describe what you're like as a player at this point. Um, definitely still score. Um, get my teammates involved. I'm an uh, underrated passer. Um, I got faster. I can jump higher. I'm just ready to show everyone. And so let's talk about high school now. Your freshman year – Undefeated season, state champions. Sophomore year, you don't really play much. You guys don't have as well as a team season. What was that freshman year like, though? What was that first year kind of winning the state championship, not dealing with loot losses at all? What was that first year like? Freshman year, it was like – it was a perfect season. You know, like um, – there, were, but there was some games that I, I thought that we were going to lose. You just know that we won those type of games. It just shows you how um, – how good of a team we were and how well coached we were and how um, how together we were as as teammates. Um, yeah, like we went 28-0. We beat um, West Town in the state championship. And for me to do that as a freshman, it was it was definitely crazy, definitely crazy. Because a lot of people think um, Haverford is – just a preppy school for like lacrosse and stuff like that. But just to show that we went 20 and no, definitely um, put us on a pedestal. Now you've have had two years of pretty much complete opposite years. You go make Max Brackford all American. You're a big time player, get highly ranked 24 no state champions. Next year you don't play much. Season is not as well for the team. How were you able to learn from both experiences now as you move forward into your upperclassmen years? Uh, never get too high, never get too low. Um, I feel like that's definitely been a motto. My year, no, my freshman year, I had a, a really good year. My sophomore year, I got injured, obviously. Um, yeah, just stay in the course, you know, just um, having a, a positive mind, you know. Everything is not always going to be going to go your way. You, you got to have some adversity. And when tough times do come later on down the line, then I wouldn't know how to react now that I – broke my wrist and I went through surgery. So basically I have like scars on me now so I can get through those things. And we know all athletes that you guys have that competitive drive in you and not playing for a year has to be hard on you, especially when you guys aren't being as successful as you probably would want to. How are you able to learn from that? What are some things that you were able to learn from that opportunity just by sitting there and kind of watching the whole season play out? Um, I definitely looked at the game differently. Like I could watch different um different angles of the game, like not always on the court. Um, I watch a lot of film, film from like my freshman year all the way through AAU games. Um, definitely film and like different angles, and like how the game is watched from the sideline is different than being on a game because in a game sometimes you might not see certain things, but on the sideline you can see certain things. Like just it's just different. And you know, heading for junior season, you average about 12 points a game your freshman year. What are you capable of doing? What are, you kind of, are your expectations for you to put up next season? Um, definitely win, win the Interact in the state championship. That's definitely um, the goal, team first goal. Um, yeah, just win uh, um, league MVP. Um, just win. I, I, I really just want to win. I, I really just want to show everyone that Haverford is still – still good and that we can still go um, be really good and win interact championship and state championship. Absolutely, man. Now, after last, after your freshman year, that opportunity to go play for Team USA, you did the training camp with them. What was that time like? Oh, man, that was, that was, that was a blessing. You know, just being like, just having them call my, um, call my dad and say that I, I made the, um, the camp. It was definitely a blessing, you know, just, going there and just playing and soaking in all the knowledge that all the coaches had. Um, they're like coaches, uh, former um, NBA assistant coaches, 
high school coaches, college coaches, just to like um, learning from all three levels, all three levels. It was definitely, definitely a blessing. And you're around the top guys in 2020 at the time, 2021 guys, all these guys that are older than you that had experience. Who were some of the guys that kind of mentored you or you kind of even looked up to to kind of help you through the camp and just kind of get you better as a player? Um, I played with um, I played with Sharif Cooper. Mm-hmm. You know, he's a good point guard. You know, he directed traffic. He directed us. Um, also played with um, Trevor Kills from uh, 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 Paul to Six. Played with him. Um, Max Christie, Jalen Justice. You know, those guys. We definitely like. Um, we definitely were we're in it together, you know, because it was our first time, and we're uh, all three of us are from Philly, so we definitely was in it together, and we was kind of getting each other through, like motiv- motivating each other as well. And you probably will get another opportunity someday when USA basketball gets going again, whenever this COVID stuff's done. How do you kind of plan to improve? What would you share the biggest things now you've improved on when you head back out to the next USA camp? Um, definitely improve on um, being being a better uh, communicator and a leader on the court. Um, you know, just uh, you got to communicate. Communication is like one of the, um, the best things that you can do over there. Um, being a better teammate, motivating my, uh, my teammates, you know, getting others involved, and just playing uh, well around the game. No doubt, man. I know you also have the nickname Melzy. How that start up? Um, honestly, my family has been calling me Melzy since I was a, a kid. My aunt started calling me that. Um, one day, um, my little cousin, he's like, I think he's like eight or something like that. He's like eight years old, and um, we uh, we had dinner, and my mom called me Jamil, and my little cousin didn't even know that my real name was Jamil because my family called me Millsy all the time. So that's just crazy how nicknames spread. How's it kind of started now? Do coaches call you that? Does it kind of get out to the yeah. basketball world? Yeah, yeah, everyone calls me that. Like, even my school teachers call me Millsy. That's awesome, man. One thing I was, like, wrapping up talking about is building a legacy for yourself. And that's something that ultimately all guys want to do. And so when you are done playing basketball someday, what do you want your legacy to be for what you do both on the court as well as off of it? Um, well, in college, I want to major in, uh, sports psychology. So I feel like that's going to like, um, um, I want to help athletes with like the mental part of the game because, um, I feel like the game is 90% or 80% mental. When I was younger, I didn't really know what that meant, but now I'm starting to learn more and more about it. And I feel like just helping athletes, um, stay focused, stay locked in, being mentally prepared the day before the game, after the game, and days to come during practice, recovery, stuff like that. Stuff for like sports psychology is definitely something that I would want to do after basketball. That's awesome, man. Well, I definitely appreciate you taking time to come on today, my guy, and I look forward to seeing what God got next for you, bro. Gotcha. Appreciate it. Of course, man. You're always welcome on, man. God bless. You too, bro.